Are you a leader or change maker inside of your business, organization, or corporation? Are you looking for new, innovative ways to drive morale through the roof? Are you looking for fun and exciting icebreakers, team building exercises, and activities that will foster team growth, friendships, loyalty, and completely transform your organization from the inside out? Have you been searching for a fun and unique way to create change instead of the same old dry, boring leadership books and icebreakers that aren't actually working? Hi, I'm Erin Deal, business improv edutainer, fail fluencer, and professional Zoom who is ready to help you improve it. My mission in life is to help you develop teams and leaders through play, improv, and experiential learning. In this podcast, we will deep dive into professional development, team building, effective communication, networking, presentation skills, leadership training, how to think more quickly on your feet, and everything in between. We have helped everyone from Fortune 500 companies to small mom and pop shops transform their business, their leadership, and their people through play. So grab your chicken hat. We are about to have some fun. Welcome to Improve It, the podcast. Hello, Improve It family. It is I, Erin Deal, and if you're just tuning in to the show, welcome to the Improve It podcast, and if you are a longtime listener, first-time caller, again, don't know what that means, thanks for showing up here today. I want to talk to my Improve It fam really quick, just to kind of let you know, headspace-wise, where I'm at today. I... I'm coming to you live from the podcast closet, which is where I record all of these shows. But I did receive some news today about a family member of mine. My my mother's mother, my my granny dot, passed away today. She was 89 years old. She had dementia. Um, she was definitely sick the past couple of days with pneumonia and quickly declined. So my head is in a little bit of a different space, and I almost thought about changing the time of this recording. I found out like three hours ago, um, and I've had some time to process and also knew that this was on the horizon. But I wanted to use this as an opportunity to talk about today's topic because a lot of times things happen in our personal lives that affect us professionally. There's no going around it, especially now that we're working in our homes, most of us, and sometimes going into the office. I thought about re-recording this or moving this to a different date, but you know what? I decided to use it as an opportunity to tell you that it's okay to feel. It's okay for your personal life to affect your professional life. It's okay to not want to come on camera on a Zoom meeting. It's okay to not be 100%. And I know that's how you know me. It's usually I'm at like 102, (sighs) screaming at you in this microphone to, you know, improve yourself, fail. And those things ring true. But we're all human. We're not robots. And so what I want to talk to you about today is really allowing ourselves to be humans, but at the same time, trying to find opportunities to engage our team in a virtual world and and meeting our team where they're at, right? Like, so for example, I've got a meeting later today with my internal team and yes, I am the leader, so I can request this, but I'm going to say, hey, let's do cameras off. Uh, Why don't we hop on the Zoom, still talk what, about what we need to talk about, and let's do a walk and talk instead. Now, as a leader, you can ask for those things. Let me say this to anyone right now who is not currently leading a team, you can still ask of those things. It's okay to let things in your life affect you because we are human beings working for human beings. 
So if you are having a day and you don't feel like getting super engaged in a Zoom meeting, let your leader know. And as a leader, listen to that person. Listen and hear them. Hear them. Because we can't always be at 100. It's okay to feel. So I'm going to dedicate today's episode to the one, the only, Hottie Dottie, is what I used to call her, Granny Dot. She was the sassiest soul. Her Her soul still lives on. Her gold shoes, her painted fingernails, her blonde hair, her sassy ways will always be a part of my spirit. And I want to tell her and anybody listening who's lost somebody that they they love, that you can carry a piece of them with you at all times. And so today, I'm carrying that piece of Granny Dot with me who didn't take any BS, okay? I'm not going to give you an earmuff filter for this show, but she didn't take any BS and she stood her ground for the things that she believed in. So I want to look at today's show through the lens of how you can have highly engaged Zoom meetings, meet your team where they are at, and also provide an opportunity as a leader to listen and engage your team on a deeper level than just fun icebreakers, conversation. I'm talking about setting them up for success and making them want to show up to your virtual meeting. So hottie dotty granny dot, this one is for you. And to anybody on the Improve It fam listening today who has lost somebody, just know they live on right in your heart. And they're listening with us today, looking down on you and smiling. So Ugh, got to get that one out. <sighs> but I, I want to start from that place because I think it's so applicable to the culture and the lives of the people that we're leading right now. There's this talk in corporate America about mental health and burnout, especially with leaders. We are the heartbeat of organizations. We are the people who are leading the people, Right. And if we can't provide opportunities for our team to feel safe, to show up in a different way, or in the way that makes them feel safest, we can't expect the same in return. I'll tell you, even today, I've had two members of my team just reach out and say, what can I take off your plate today? I'm like, can you record a podcast? No. (laughs) But that's it. I would do the same for them. And I feel like they're giving me that same in return. So again, leaders, today's episode is for you, but I want you to really reflect on how you're showing up for your team right now, how you're asking them to engage with you, but more importantly, how are you engaging with them? Because that sets the tone. So Let's keep going. Let's keep rolling. First, before we get started, I want to say two announcements, just really quick housekeeping things. Number one, we have updated our hybrid hype handout to include some more tips and tricks on leading hybrid teams. That is a tongue twister, hybrid hype handout. So you can find that in the show notes today. Click on it. It'll download directly to your computer. Save it. There's a fun little video on there from yours truly. So check it out in the show notes, hybrid hype, hybrid hype handout. Also, we've got this cool new feature on our podcast page on our website, learn to improve it.com backslash podcast. It's called speak pipe. So it's almost like old school radio where you can dial in, you can leave a voice message directly from your phone. You literally press this button You just speak into your phone and you can ask me a question, you can give feedback, you can ask something that you want answered on a podcast. We are here to serve you, so I really want to hear from you. So that's also in the show notes. Speakpipe.com is the the name of the service that we're using. It's really cool. Um, So click on that so I can hear from you, know what you're liking, and know what you want more of. 
So let's go ahead and dive into today's show. I'm going to give you five hacks to highly engaged Zoom meetings. So the first hack is number one, set the stage. Now, as the facilitator of a meeting, you've got to set the stage. And I want to look at this through the lens of an improviser, okay? In improv, we have what we call a run of show. If we're doing short form improv, that just lists out all the games that we're going to play. Think of your agenda as the run of show for your Zoom meetings. And it could be Zoom, WebEx, Teams, whatever it is that you use. But I want you to set the stage for your team in a way like this. Have a general run of show that is on camera or off camera, breakout rooms, no breakout rooms. So right away, people know, okay, I can dial in in my pajamas or, you know what, I need to put on a chambray top over this workout top right now and maybe let down my mom bun. Think about what it is you want them to do. So if you want them on camera, tell them ahead of time in the meeting notes, in the calendar invite on camera. And if it's going to be interactive in breakout rooms or you're expecting a lot of participation, say breakout rooms, no breakout rooms. And if it's breakout rooms, just let them know. Have that be an automatic placeholder on every calendar invite for your team because it's so important to set that stage and let know or let the people know what to expect. So again, think of this as your run of show in a scene or a run of show on a stage. We as improvisers don't get on stage without knowing ha- some sort of idea what we're about to do, whether it's a short form set, a long form set, or we're just going to be doing sketches. We know what we're going to do ahead of time. Same for your team. Let them know. They will appreciate it later. Now, for our workshops, we have great contact with our clients ahead of time about logistics. So we're letting them know to let their team know, number one, our workshops are super interactive. So your camera's expected to be on. We're going to ask you to go in breakout rooms. We're going to ask you to make sure you're in a quiet place and let plants, spouses, partners, whoever know that it's going to get a little loud because that's the expectation of our workshop. You are engaging with us for an engaging experience. And so that expectation is set ahead of time. Every meeting does not have to be super engaged. And so many people don't want to show up and have to pretend to be engaged when they don't want to be on camera that day. So if you're a leader and you're expecting your team to be on camera, Let them know ahead of time so they can prepare. People who are being led, if you don't feel like being on camera that day for whatever reason, let your leader know or just bow out of the meeting. That is okay. Your mental health is the biggest priority. But set the stage ahead of time so people know what to expect. And if they can bow out of it, They know why they're bowing out of it because they're not mentally in a place to engage that day. All right. Hack number two, set your props. Now, before we go on stage as improvisers, if we're doing a sketch show, we know, okay, we need these props on stage left. We need these props on stage right. We need wigs. We need this. So we know what we're going to have in the show ahead of time. Same for you and your meetings. Make sure you are setting props accordingly. Now, what are the props that you need for Zoom meetings or virtual meetings, if you will? First and foremost, make sure you arrive early. I'm talking five to 10 minutes early before your meeting starts with a co-host for the meeting. Think about not only what do you need to make it more engaging, but what does that co-host need to have ahead of time so you can run a very smooth meeting together? So for example, do you need pen, paper, water because you have dry mouth? Do you need a phone because you're going to do an activity that needs a timer? So make sure your co-host knows what they need to have ahead of time. And then also make sure you assign that person, especially if you're using Zoom, Assign that person as a co-host to the meeting as well. 
because I cannot tell you how many times I have lost a meeting because I didn't appoint another co-host as co- or another person as co-host. If I'm the host and I lose my internet, the whole meeting goes down. So as soon as you log on five to 10 minutes early with your co-host, assign them to be the co-host, which gives them a lot of power. A webbed man once said, with great power comes great responsibility. So they also get access as the co-host to share their screen, to breakout rooms, to helping you with technology. So it's super helpful for you to have in general. Make sure you apply the same rule of giving them props, such as, Do they need to have specific links that they can put into the chat box? So for example, at the end of every uh, workshop that we do, we have a survey link. What I do before we go into a workshop as the host is I copy paste that survey link, make sure the co-host has it ready to go at the end when I say, take our survey, boom. And that link is populated in the chat box. They have it already copy and pasted. And another thing I like to do here is Make sure that both of us have our names on our bottom left-hand corner of our Zoom rectangle, as well as pronouns. It is so helpful to have pronouns. And I think we have those on things like Instagram profiles, LinkedIn profiles. Put them on your meeting profiles, especially if you're inviting people to the meeting that you may not know their proper pronoun. Now, I want to make sure that you're also guiding people on how to successfully set up the profile look. So there's that top button on the top right-hand portion of Zoom, which is gallery mode, which makes you look like the Brady Bunch, or speaker mode, which makes you look like a giant talking head. Have an idea. Do you want everybody to see each other on a grid? As soon as participants join, one big tip is to allow the co-host to let everybody in and allow that co-host to also make sure that they are letting late people to the meeting in so it doesn't interrupt your train of thought as the leader of the meeting. And then have that co-facilitator also make sure they are typing in the chat box. If you're new or you're just joining us, make sure your view is on gallery mode or whatever mode you want them to be on. Now, The same thing goes with helping them find the chat. I love to start asking people as they join a warm-up question. So it fills that buffer while everybody's just joining the meeting and you hear all those chimes like, do new, do new, do new. Ask them a question so they can start engaging right away. What is your favorite work from home breakfast item? What did you have for breakfast? Tell us your favorite show you've binged on Netflix lately. So Have that ready to go. Have some questions applied or thinking through in your mind that you can throw in to start the engagement early. And then also, as people are joining, have them check their name and pronouns. And this could be another task for your co-host. Have the co-host have a list. As soon as people join, go on gallery mode, make sure your name number two is changed and add your pronouns and just type that in the chat function so people can refer back to it. One final prop that I love so much is Zoom backgrounds. Now, this is very specific to Zoom. I am a Zoom B. I use Zoom all day long. They are not paying me to say this. I would like them to pay me to say this, but they don't. So, One of my favorite background filters is the blur. So if you go on Zoom and you go under where the button says video, there is an arrow dropdown and it will say Zoom virtual backgrounds. And then you can click on one that says none. You can click on one that says blur. Blur makes everything behind you blurry. So it just focuses on you. And it actually, in my opinion, makes the visual of you look very sharp on camera to the person on the receiving end. And it takes anything in your background, like if you're sitting in your room talking, it takes your bed out of the frame. You can't see what's behind you, just sort of meshes all the colors together, but it's a really great hack. So make sure you do that as well. That's another prop you can set for yourself and then encourage anybody to to set their background if they want. People people generally have an idea of how to use backgrounds at this point, but it's a great prop to have in your back pocket if you want to change it up 
right away. Uh, We also have a background that we use for our workshops, which just has our logo on it. And it's very small. And it just, it's it's blue and it also kind of looks like a blur in the background. But whatever background makes you feel comfortable, if you want to blur out your bed or your couch behind you, make sure you've set that before logging on. Now, hack number three. We first have set our stage. Number two, we have set our props. Number three, we are going to set our lighting. So here's something that I never thought I would say. Own a ring light. You heard me say it. Yes, I did. Own a ring light. I am a failfluencer. <sighs> Two years ago, owning a ring light was not ever in my vocabulary. Now I own three. And I have lost one very dear to me, Molly Ringwald, RIP. However, ring lights really make a difference, especially on Zoom or on any virtual meeting that you are planning. I'm telling you right now, lighting matters. So you can get a cheap ring light for about 20, 25 bucks on Amazon. We're gonna link to one in particular in the show notes that we've used. And it's super easy. You just purchase it, set it up, face it towards you. So the light is shining on your face. If you're sitting in front of a window and you can face the window, so your face is towards the window, great. That's another option instead of a ring light. But for me, I have a a window actually behind me in the way that my room is set up. And so I have to physically close the blinds and then put a ring light in front of me to get better lighting. So figure out the way that your room works know the lighting changes when the sun goes down. But a ring light really is important for the people on the receiving end, especially if you're facilitating or leading a meeting to see you, okay? Now, there's also these huge lights. They're not huge, but they're very nice upscale lights that you can get and you can place on either side of your desk or your laptop that really make you pop. And those are a little more pricey. We receive zero kickback on these, but we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna link to them in the show notes as well. I don't personally have these, but our director of talent, Christy, does. We've used them for filming things in person. It's just a really extra step if you want extra oomph. Know that they're an option, but the lighting really does matter. Do not sit in the dark. Literally, you will be in the dark in your meeting. So lighting makes such a huge difference, as does the quality of your camera. So for me, I have a Surface laptop, okay, a Windows Surface laptop, and my little camera on this laptop is fine. I mean, it's fine, right? I I, I used to use it back, you know, 2019 when I would do a few Zoom meetings here and there. But now that I'm on Zoom, five hours a day. Literally, I live there. I'm a Zumbi. I have to upgrade my camera to this little Logitech camera that plugs into my USB. We're going to link to that in the show notes as well because it's so important for people when they, especially if you're just meeting somebody, Zoom is your first impression. So if you're working with a vendor or you're working with an outside client, and they can't really see you, your pixelation is fuzzy, your lighting is bad, that's like walking into their office with like coffee stains on your shirt, your hair a mess, and you're barefoot, okay? That's the equivalent. So if you're full-time working from home, really make sure you are setting the lighting. You've set the stage, you've set the props, you're setting the lighting. And if you're a leader... He's like, I just meet with my internal team. They don't care. Then this is your world. I'm just living in it. These are options for you should you want to upgrade, okay, as Beyonce would say. So set the stage, number one. Set your props, hack number two. Hack number three, set your lighting. Now that we're ready to go, it's hack number four, which I like to call lights, camera, action. So here we go. You are leading this meeting. 
You are setting the tone. Think about this. Your energy is a mirror. Mirror. That's what I said. Mirror, mirror on the wall. What you put into that little Logitech camera or that little dinky camera on your Surface laptop is the energy you're going to get back. And let me tell you straight up, sometimes I'm given 150 on this end and I'm getting 60% on the other side. But imagine if I only gave 98, I'd get like 30%. You set the tone. What energy do you want to receive back? So if this meeting is an uplifting meeting, you're trying to get people motivated, set that tone early on. So another huge driver that I want to put into motion for you is to solicit feedback. This is me clapping. Get that feedback from people early on in that meeting. So one thing we love to do in our workshops is to set an intention right away in the meeting for the beginning of the workshop. So let's say it's a workshop on leadership. Okay, what do you want to get out of this workshop on leadership? What is one word that is going to take you through this workshop? What is one word that you wanna get out of today's session? Put it in the chat box for you as a leader. Today, we're talking about sales metrics. Maybe sales are down, but you wanna get them excited and motivated. Right now, I want you to put one word in the chat that you want to get out of today's meeting. You might hear things like clarity. You might hear things like inspiration. You might hear things like data. Who knows the word that somebody wants to get? But as a leader, this is an opportunity to check that chat and see what your audience wants. What do they want from you? What can you help them with? This isn't just you delivering information. It is a conversation. And if you can think of every meeting that you have virtually as a conversation, not just you leading and talking at them, wow, people are going to show up. I just screamed at you. They're going to want to show up. So think about what it is that you want to get out of this and then listen to what your audience or your team wants to get out of it. And really mesh those two worlds together. And maybe sometimes they don't line up. Maybe you have a vision of the meeting, but the team is right there in the intention of their chat. They're saying things that you weren't planning on talking about. My friend, you might have to improvise a little bit and go off course because these people that you're leading the meeting for, for, not for, for, they are the ones that are going to be doing the work. They're going to be the ones in the trenches getting it done. So you need to listen to them in order to help them do their jobs. So really think about that. After you've set the stage, you've set the props, you've set the lighting, it's lights, camera, action, hit play, but make sure the energy that you're putting out there is the energy you want back. And also expect that you might have to go off course based on some of the feedback that you're getting in that conversation from your team. Here is the fifth and final hack, my Improve It family. We're hitting play. We're starting off the meeting. Hack number five is warm up your audience. Now, you've asked them in the chat, what's the intention you want to get out of today's meeting? How can you, as they're signing on, you've already started to warm them up a bit by asking them a question in the chat. So they're starting to engage and you've let them know ahead of time there's going to be engagement. Now that you've got them in the meeting, how can you right away break the ice without doing a trust fall or without doing a dance? I've got some ways. All right. So there's something we call shake it out. It's a warm-up activity that I love doing. We do it almost at the beginning of every workshop. And it's literally where we physically shake out our limbs, starting with our right arm to eight, our left arm to eight, our right leg to eight, our left leg to eight. And then we go down to seven on the right arm, seven on the left leg, seven on the right leg, seven on the left leg. And we do this sitting or standing. 
but it just releases some of that tension that we get while we hunch over our laptops, while we're eating lunch at our desk, which we shouldn't do. So getting those endorphins moving, getting everybody on the same playing field is a great way to warm up the team. You can ask a fun trivia question, and maybe this is your co-host who you've asked to join the meeting and help you. They're throwing in trivia in the chat, and people are answering in the chat, and that way you can keep tally of who is winning, who is not. You can have people, as you're starting the meeting, to throw out wins. What are the wins of the week? What are things that have happened that have really driven your team forward? Put them in the chat box. Or I like to have a good rule of thumb. If I have 20 people or less on a Zoom, we're going to go off mute. We're going to talk. So shout out your wins. If you've got some wins, what were your wins this week? Tell me about your wins. Now, if you are going to do breakout rooms and have some deeper engagement, start a conversation, ask them a question and say, hey, right off the bat, we're going to jump into a breakout room. I want you to talk with your partner about your wins for the week. I want you to talk with your partner about a client challenge that you're having. I want you to talk with your your partner about a presentation you have coming up that you're nervous about. Whatever the topic is, ask them a question so they have to filter through that question in their own mind. Pop them in a breakout room. Let them start chatting through with a partner to warm them up for the rest of the meeting. You know your team. You know what they respond to, but get them interacting right away. So you get them in, you've set the tone, you've let them know what the meeting is about, you've set the intention, now you're warming them up to get to the meat and the potatoes. This is like your appetizer, okay? You're giving them that appetizer, so when you get to the meat and the potatoes, their mind's already in that hamster wheel. You hear me snapping? I'm snapping. Their mind's already starting to go round and round because they're thinking. They're in it with you. You're not talking at them. You're in talking with them and guiding them. So those are those five hacks that I really, really want you to implement to have highly engaged Zoom meetings. Now, one thing after I want to just caveat here. So you've gotten them to the meat and the potatoes part. At the end, make sure you're warming them down. Give them key takeaways. Give them next steps. One thing that is a great idea that I love, love, love to do with a bigger team is pick somebody at the very top of the meeting. Every meeting, it's completely different, but pick a person to have a have a recap at the end of the meeting, so the key takeaways, and then the next steps. And that person doesn't know it's going to be them every time, or they don't know it's going to be them at the beginning of the meeting until you appoint them that. They're engaged that entire meeting because they're taking notes, and then perhaps they choose the next note taker for the meeting that you have the following week or however it is you want to word it, but giving somebody that, that autonomy or giving them that, that job holds them accountable. It makes them feel like they're being selected, that they are guiding the meeting, that they're guiding the next meeting. So keep that top of mind as you're going through the meeting itself. Now I've given you these five hacks. Quick recap, set the stage, set your props, set lighting. When the lights, camera, and action are on, make sure it's a conversation. Warm up your team. And then here's a five and a half hack. Warm them down and make sure they know what the next steps are. You can engage your team and you can meet them where they're at. And like I said, being 100% with you, I did not feel like recording today's episode if I'm being real. And I told myself, somebody needs to hear this today, that there are multiple days we don't feel like showing up on a meeting for whatever reason. So I made this comfortable for me. I'm sitting here in my podcast closet. Like I said, I got my mom bun. I got my yoga pants on. And I did it because I wanted you to hear it. So leaders, if you're listening today and you know somebody on your team is struggling, allow them to show up in the way that they want to show up, even if it's not the way that you've set the stage for. Remember that. We're all human. We're all learning. We're all evolving. We're all processing things. So take today's lessons. 
take these hacks, use them, apply them. Let me know. Send me a speak pipe message on our website. You can find that link in the show notes. Tell me what you thought of today's show or ask a question that I can answer for you on another episode. Download that hybrid hype handout and just keep growing. Keep failing. Keep trying. That means you're still improving. And know that I am rooting for you because that world out there, that big crazy world needs that special it that only you can bring. Thanks for being here. My Improve It family. I love you. Hey friends, thanks for tuning in to Improve It. I am so happy you are along for the ride. If you enjoyed this show, head on over to iTunes to leave us a five-star review and subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode. New episodes drop every Wednesday. Now, if you're really feeling today's show and you've improved it even just a little bit, please take a screenshot and tag me at Keeping It Real Deal on Instagram and share it in your stories. I'll see you next week, but I I want to leave you with this thought. What did you improve today and how will that help your future successful self? Think about it. I am rooting for you and the world needs that special it that only you can bring. See you next time.